What is up traders? So the results are in. Last week I asked you to go over to Instagram and to publish a comment below the video about drawdowns with whatever you are personally struggling with when it comes to discipline. We had over 216 comments on that video. I appreciate every one of you who participated. Thank you very much. And what I decided to do was go over the top three struggles that I saw based on those comments. Here they are. I plugged them all into a spreadsheet, picked out the top three. So today, what we're going to do is if you are struggling with one, moving stops and targets. So this means if you're a trader who whenever you're about to lose a trade, you move your stop down because you don't want to take that loss. Or when you're supposed to take targets, you end up taking targets a little bit before that way too early because you're scared that the market may not make it there. If you're a trader who struggles with that, today's video is for you. Number two, patience, FOMO, missing out on a trade, breaking your rules for entry because you want to make sure you jump on board in the trend of a market or you want to make sure you grab some profit. So you end up breaking rules, whatever your rules are for entry, you break them or you don't have rules for an entry. That's the second problem when it comes to discipline that I saw based on your comments. And third, sticking to a trading plan, not jumping systems and sticking to the plan that you created for yourself. With that being the case, that's the three things we're going to go over in today's video. If you're struggling with any of them, make sure to stick around through the intro and disclaimer and watch the entire video. If you're new here, subscribe, click that like button to join the over 190,000 trader community we currently have. Follow us over on Instagram to be a part of our next challenge. At the end of this video, I will announce the winner of free lifetime access to all of our paid content that we have right now and that we come up with in the future based on the comments we received on last week's Instagram post. If you're interested in that, follow us over on Instagram and I will see you directly after the intro to go over the three biggest discipline struggles that you're having in your trading. Okay, traders, so let's jump right into number one moving stops and targets. If this is something you're struggling with, then make sure to pay attention. In the case that you are actually moving your stops whenever your trade gets very close to that stop loss because you don't want to move, lose money. And in the case where you're moving your target down because you're scared the market's not going to get there, there is only one reason for this. And it's because you do not trust yourself. That is the only reason you would be moving your stops or moving your targets. So it comes down to a simple answer of how do you trust yourself more in order to stop moving those stops and, and moving those targets in different types of situations. And to elaborate on that further, do you think you can control the market? Do you, I mean, obviously there are institutional banks that have hundreds of millions of dollars and yes, they can push the market around. But as an individual retail trader, do you think you can control the market? The answer to that is obviously no. You have absolutely no control over what the market does. Neither do I, neither does any other retail trader. But what do you have control over? What you have control over is what you do. You have control over yourself. So if you place a trade and your stop loss is set 10 pips and your target is set 20 pips and the market goes eight pips and then you move your stop loss down to 18 to 20 pips because you don't want to be stopped out, then all you're doing is hoping that the market turns around. You're trading based on hope. You're like the person that walks into a gas station with his last dollar to buy a lottery ticket and hopes that it actually wins the lottery that he or she actually wins the lottery. That's not how we trade. That's called gambling. And gambling is not how you create an edge over the market, which is what our entire purpose as traders is, is to have a statistic advantage and edge over the market. So you don't want to gamble. You don't want to go out here and play the lottery when it comes to trading. What you want to do is have a way you can trust yourself, right? You don't want to count on the market. We can't trust the market. We don't know what the market's going to do. The market's probably lied to you before, right? You've probably had instances where you said, hmm, this support level looks like a great place. Let's, let's do it on a chart to make this a little more interesting. This support level, it looks like a great place to put a stop under, right? And you buy here, you have your uh, target set up here at previous resistance, let's say, right there. If this is the case and this is your trade, how many times has the market done something like this and stopped you out? 
hundreds of times. The market lies. The market does not tell the truth. So what you have to do is instead of trusting the market, and every time you move your stop loss down, you're just trusting that the market doesn't hit it. You're trusting the market instead of trusting yourself. What you have to do is flip that coin. Flip it from you trusting the market to you trusting yourself. And here is practical steps for you to get to a place where you can actually do that. In order to trust yourself, we go over this time and time again here on the YouTube channel along within our training material. In order to trust yourself, what you have to do is have rules in place for these types of situations. If your rule is that you buy when the market creates this situation, long wicks to the bottom side, and you buy with a 20 pip below the support level stop loss and your target is set at a two to one and this is what your trade looks like two to one then that is what you need to trust how do you trust that we talk about this a lot as well one of the only ways that i personally found to trust this information is by back testing it and having a trading plan in place having a trading plan in place that tells me when i'm going to enter the market and then tells me where i'm wrong my stop loss if this market breaks the support level we're seeing trend continuation i don't want to be in the trade anymore i don't want to ride this thing down keep moving my stop loss and lose way more than i anticipated on losing in that trade and i know that's something a lot of you are struggling with based on the comments we received so in order to avoid that situation create your rules from stop for a stop loss and you have to do them consistently you have to use those rules consistently every single time you place a trade and what's the best way to create consistency and discipline to those rules is by creating a full strategy and testing it in historical data to give yourself confidence that it's worked before if you see that this scenario where you enter the market at support levels and this is just a hypothetical strategy don't go out here and trade this and then you put a stop loss 20 pips below here and a target just at a two to one risk reward if you see that this wins 45, 55, 60% of the time, and you know that consistently placing a trade like this gives you an advantage, you will not believe the amount of confidence you'll have in placing this trade, in placing that stop loss and leaving it, not changing it, and not moving targets down just because the market gets close and then creates a little pullback. You will not believe how much confidence you'll receive from doing this back testing process when it comes to creating discipline in your trading. It is essential and it's why I talk about back testing so much. So many traders try to avoid this process for the simple reason that it's hard and it takes time. Manual back testing is not fun, but it will give you the discipline you need in order to keep from making the mistakes that all, a lot of you seem to be making. A lot of traders everywhere are making Just mistakes I made. I'm not saying that I didn't make these type of mistakes as well. I definitely did. But this back testing process is what gave me the discipline to stop making that type of mistake. Now, Let's, let's do some practical rules that you can use for stops and targets and go through the markets and test. Of course, at some point, you will have to create conditions and entry reasons for a strategy. But for me, what I like to look at for stops and targets, there's a few different ways you can do this. For stops, I've had a lot of questions about ATR. The average true range indicator is what this is. You can find it on nearly any trading platform. If your platform doesn't have an ATR indicator, you may want to switch it up. You may want to try a different trading platform. But it is what you see in the top left corner of my chart right up here. What this indicator does is gives you an average of the last 14 candles with its normal settings. Its normal settings gives you an average of the last 14 candles that have been printed in price action on whatever time frame you're doing. What this does is allows us to have a sense of the volatility of the market. If the last 14 candles have been very small, then your stop loss shrinks, gives you a good opportunity for risk reward ratios. And if the last 14 candles are huge, then the, uh, the stop loss you're gonna use grows. And that gives you an opportunity not to be stopped out by the volatile swings of the market. So ATR is what I use every single time I place a stop loss. And one of the things that I like to do is place this ATR indicator. So right now we have a seven pip ATR this last is not, it doesn't count on the Aussie New Zealand. So we have a seven pip ATR here on the Aussie New Zealand. If I was to have a strategy where I bought the support level, I would want to put that ATR stop, that seven pips below that support level. So that gives me an opportunity to stay out of the whipsaw of the market and also have a defined place for a stop loss. That's a, that's a great place to start. Now, there are other things I do, for instance, in trend continuation strategies, just giving you 
like a few different ideas for your own stops and target placement for trend continuation strategies. What I like to do is place my entry. Let's say I was buying this candle here or selling, excuse me, in trend continuation and anticipation, the market would continue down. I sell this candle. I may do a two ATR stop loss from my entry. So exactly from the entry right here, I would go a two ATR stop and do a three ATR stop for my target. That is another way you can do it, especially for trend continuation type trades. So if you have a trend continuation strategy and you're moving your stop loss a lot, create rules like this for your stops and targets and then test those rules and historical data to gain the confidence you need to stop making those type of mistakes and then move on to actually using those rules in real time markets without making mistakes like moving your stop loss and you will be extremely surprised in how much this will benefit your trading a trend continuation example let's let's find an actual trend continuation example and place a trade based on it and i can show you even better an example of doing this so your strategy could be I wait for a market that's trending down right here. What do we use when we're trending down? We want to see a one, two, three. That's what I use. We have a one here. Two is the pullback. Three is the break of uh, structure support. One, two, three. We have our one, two, three move. Now, after my one, two, three move in a trend situation, I wait for the market to pull back up, touch the 50. I think this is the 50. Touch the 50 EMA. And this is just a hypothetical strategy and give me once we touch the 50 ma i want to see a shooting star candle that could be the conditions and entry before your strategy what you would do is go through historical data test this multiple times a hundred times or more in historical data every pair and every time frame to give you confidence in that strategy on that pair and on that time frame but what's important is that you set rules not only for this entry on this strategy but you also set rules for stop loss like we just said maybe your stop loss rules are one ATR above this, uh, the, the swing high there, or the entry candle, you have one ATR. Or you could use the other example I talked about, have a two ATR from your entry, which is a little bit different, but that's another example of something you could use. And then in terms of targets, you could either set your targets back at previous support, you could set your targets at three ATR, or you could do targets with Fibonacci extensions of some kind, even previous support levels. If I zoom out here and we try to find the previous support level on the Aussie New Zealand, we probably have to go up a time frame. Uh, but let's say right in here is the previous level of support. It's right there. So there's the previous level of support. That could be your target. The point is not that you pick the perfect position. Remember, we're not trusting the market because the market's not always going to go exactly where you expect it to. We're trusting ourselves. And if you test this in historical data and see that it's happened multiple times that the market goes down to a previous level of support after you enter a trade based on your rules and set a stop loss based on your rules, and then the market goes down to your target enough times, more often than not, more than 50% would be a, a valuable way to do this. So more than 50% of the time you hit your targets, now you have a statistic advantage. And those are a couple of examples of ways you could set stops and targets. Those are examples of ways that you can actually test things in the market. That right there is gonna give you everything you need in order to stop making the mistake of moving your stop and taking targets early. Now, I am not in any way meaning this disrespectful, but if you're someone who just said to yourself, that's way too much work, then trading probably isn't for you. Trading is not easy. Trading is very difficult. You will deal with losses. You will have to create a statistic advantage that doesn't win 100% of the time, and you will have to be okay with that. And along with all of that, you'll have to put in the work of testing to create discipline. So that's the first of three that we're going to go over today. That was a little lengthy. I'll probably put some like timestamps in the description below for whatever you're struggling with. Number two, though, let's go ahead and move on to the number two thing traders struggle with in terms of discipline based on the comments from our last Instagram post. That is patience, FOMO, breaking their rules for entry. Let's go ahead now and go over that. So when it comes to patience, what this means is that we have traders, and you may fall under this category, that consistently you are placing trades that are outside of your rules for entry. Let's use the same example as we just did on the Aussie New Zealand. If your tra trading strategy, your entire trading plan and strategy say that your entry reason is right here, the shooting star candle. That's the only way you can enter the market. 
based on your trading plan, based on your strategy. That's it. You have to be patient and follow that trading plan. You have to be patient and wait on this entry. Well, if you're a trader who consistently trades different, maybe you trade engulfing candles when they happen just because you don't want to miss out on this big move down. Maybe you trade a double top even though you're not supposed to. Just because you don't want to miss out on the trade, then this section's for you. So at this point, if you are someone doing this, it comes down to trust in yourself as well. A lot of these are going to have the same answer. If you are someone who's having FOMO, you're, you're scared that you're missing out on trades, it may be a good idea to create more entry reasons. If you already have a tested strategy, which I'm guessing you do, if you already have an entry reason, you should have tested that through historical data in the process of backtesting. So if that's the case and you already have all of that set in stone, it's time to start testing different entry reasons. Because at the point that no trade meets your trading strategy, plan, or entry reason, at no point should you be trading because, again, you're trading based on hope. You're trusting that the market's going to do what you expect and not trusting the tested data that you've actually accumulated through the process of backtesting. And that, in, in a sense, is just a recipe for failure for any trader out there. So when it comes to patience, one of the only things I can say is be patient. Wait on your strategy to come to fruition. Make sure that every one of your rules is in place before you place a trade. If you don't do that, then that lack of patience, the only way it can be solved is by adding different entries, different stipulations, and different strategies so that you can trade more. If what you need to do is trade more, just create different strategies. Create new strategies that give you the opportunity to be in more trades. Because otherwise, you're going to keep making the mistake of not being patient enough to actually wait on your trading opportunity. And this is essential. You have to sit on your hands when there are no trades. To give you a little story about this, when I first started trading, I had this as one of my biggest problems in terms of discipline. And what I would do is consistently make trades that were based not on my entry reason that I had tested in historical data. I'd already done all of my testing. I knew it gave me an advantage, but I would see a news event hear of another trader taking a trade somewhere that I didn't have my strategy met at, let's say a level of support, something like this. I'd hear another trader on TradingView or other forums that was taking trades from here. And I'd go, shit, I have to get involved in that. If they're taking trades here, they're profitable. I should be involved in that too. When in reality, the, the strategy that they were using was way different than mine. Whatever they were doing had nothing to do with my actual trading plan, and I was trying to become an independently profitable trader, ironically. So I would place a trade, and that literally led to losing about 45% of my initial trading capital, even after me going through the backtesting process, putting in the work of creating an entry and a trading strategy. Even after all of that work, this mistake of not being patient, of FOMO, fear of missing out on trades, consistently actually created me losing 45% of my total account value. And that's a mistake I want you to avoid at all costs. So remember that story when you think of placing trades that don't meet your rules for entry. Now, for the third and final mistake that all traders seem to be making, we have sticking to the trading plan. This is going to go hand in hand with what I just said when it comes to trusting yourself and sticking to your trading plan. One of the other things when it comes to sticking to your trading plan, since I went over entries and waiting for your perfect setup, the other thing that I saw was jumping systems, consistently trading a different system every time one system goes into drawdown. And let me show you an example of something that I think can help here. I'm gonna bring over our equity curve for the EAP as of right now. Unfortunately, we are right now in a drawdown. I'm not trying to hide that from anyone. I think it's an incredible thing to be able to show because hopefully at the end of the year, and this is why we do review videos in the EAP training program, is because at the end of the year, when we end up profitable, I can show traders, look, we went through this amount of drawdown for this length of time and still ended up profitable. So that's what you can do too, that's why we have this part of the EAP training program is to help you from switching strategies. So in the EAP this year, we've had instances where we went, this right here was six weeks without making any profit, without making any new equity highs. That being the case, it made it very difficult for me included, anyone, it would be difficult to stick to a trading plan if that was the case, right? It would be hard to be disciplined and not jump strategies with that being the case. But if I would have jumped strategies here, six weeks in, right in this area when I was at the peak of my drawdown or even right here when we made it back up to a 19% gain, 
right here. If I would have jumped strategies then, who knows what would have happened when it comes to my equity curve. The new strategy could have done this. And, and that's why it's so important to stick through the drawdowns. How do you do that? Through the process of backtesting as well. Through the process of backtesting, I've realized that the strategies that we trade in the EAP training program can come with drawdown. They can come with six weeks, a month, two months of drawdown. I've seen that through my back testing results. With that being the case, I am completely composed and okay with sticking to my trading plan, sticking to my strategies, entry reasons, and everything through this six week drawdown. And doing so allowed our equity curve from one point at 19% to make it all the way up to 61%. And yes, we've had a drawdown since then. But the point is, there was there would have been no way for me to make it from 19% to 61% if I was consistently switching strategies. The only way this was possible was because I stuck to the strategy that I knew gave me a statistic advantage over the market through periods of drawdown. I didn't let those periods of drawdown take me down with them in a, in a sense. I didn't let them cause me to start switching strategies and jumping all over the place with my trading plan. And because of that, I was able to take a 19% gain, turn it to a 61% gain at our peak this year. Right now, we're currently in about a 12% drawdown back down to, I think, 42%, 43% right now. And that's a part of trading. Having drawdowns is going to happen. I'm not going to start switching strategies because we're in a drawdown. I'm going to trade my plan consistently and I will, I, statistically, I know I'll come out on top by the end of the year. I have complete trust in my system. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. The way I got complete trust in that system is one, because I've traded it for five years straight at this point and been profitable every year since, but also because of the fact that I did back testing that went back five to 10 years on each pair and time frame that I traded. So that process is going to be the solution to almost all problems in terms of discipline. That has been the three things that uh, every trader struggles with, including myself, when it comes to discipline, the top three things that we've seen when it comes to the Instagram comments that you guys left over on Instagram for us. Again, I appreciate that so much. And right now, we're going to dive into the winner of the Instagram contest, the winner of all of our paid content that we currently have, lifetime memberships to everything we currently have and everything we have in the future. Let's go ahead and dive into that. Right before we do, we're going to have another competition. Uh, today or tomorrow, I'm going to do a post on Instagram about technical analysis. And what I want you to do is head over to Instagram, leave a comment under that post. You can head over there and follow us now. That way you'll be alerted about that post when it comes up. And then leave a comment under that post with your biggest struggle in terms of technical analysis. And what I'm going to do is pick the biggest struggle or maybe the top three struggles that I see out of those comments. And I'm going to do a video just like this about technical analysis in the coming weeks. Also, one person who leaves a comment will be awarded with lifetime access to everything that we have, every uh, paid membership we have right now in programming course, and also the Advanced Pattern Mastery course coming up soon, and also the Reversal Trading Mastery course we have coming out very soon as well. So if you want to be alerted about that Instagram post and be able to comment under that with your struggles in terms of technical analysis and also have a chance to win that contest, head over to Instagram, go ahead and follow us there and comment under tomorrow's post. Now, let's go ahead and get into the winner of last week's Instagram contest. So what I've done is looked at the comments we had. There was 216 comments. We're gonna randomly generate a number between one and 216. And also, if you commented twice, we did have some people that ended up commenting more than once. In that case, your first comment is the only one that counts. So if I land on your second comment, then that's not going to count as a win, and we're going to just redo it. So in terms of the winner, let's go ahead and generate a number between 1 and 216. That number is 203. Let's see where the 203rd comment is. Holy shit, I did not count these. Wow. I'm going to go through and count every one of these and land on 203. I'll be right back. All right, so after counting literally every one of those down to 203, I wish it would have generated a much smaller number. That would have been a lot easier for me. But anyway, the winner is MS7 underscore worldwide. I've been watching and learning from your videos on YouTube since I've started learning about last year, and I have to admit that I'm struggling with risk management, patience, confidence in the trade and trading strategy, sometimes even risk rewards. I hope you'll pick me. You have been picked. Uh, congratulations, MS7 Worldwide. You will be getting a DM from me with the links and everything to follow up with where you can get 
complete lifetime access to everything that we do, not only that we have out right now, but also the programs and courses that we have coming up in the future. Congrats on that. Again, if you want to be a part of the same competition, along with being a part of telling me what you really need in terms of technical analysis, there's going to be a post coming out tomorrow that I want you to be a part of. So make sure to follow us on Instagram, comment under that post for your chance to win. If you're struggling and you want to be a part of any of our paid content, there are links in the description for that, along with some free content that you can get your hands on as well. Make sure you're subscribed here. Make sure you click that like button. I hope this video has been extremely helpful to you in terms of helping you with your discipline. That was its entire purpose. It was a long one. Thank you so much if you stayed until the end for watching. Make sure to leave a comment below this video about what you thought of it, and I will talk to you in the next one. Trade Green.